It's certainly an issue which um, very much uh, preoccupies, uh, I mean, European politicians, but certainly also, I mean, the the ordinary uh, European, if it is a, a, a person from Denmark or Germany or Austria or uh, wherever, there is no doubt that that um, since I think since 9/11 um, in 2001, I mean, uh, it has been it has been a very very important question in Europe to deal with uh, all kinds of, uh, of issues re related to, uh, to international uh, terrorism. And I think, unfortunately, uh, right-wing movements in Europe are very much taking advantage of this uh, so that, I mean, the recent uh, refugee crisis uh, is very much used uh, politically in order to influence uh, the, if you will, public discourse in uh, in Europe, and, and therefore I think uh, what we can uh, what we can see uh, recently is that uh, in many countries, including my own, uh, which is uh, Denmark, I mean you see movements, you see tendencies to a much more harsh uh, policy uh, towards uh, people from other states. No matter if it's uh, refugees or work migrants or for that for that matter people arriving as uh, part of the family reunion uh, agreement. So in this sense, I mean it's certainly uh, very important. But I mean it's 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 of course important to emphasize that it is a fact that a very very rich uh, Europe is doing, in my view, very little uh, really to help. Uh, I mean, solving some of the issues that that uh, that comes from uh, from uh, from this uh, situation. It depends very much on uh, on where we are, so to speak. Uh, I mean, you have in Greece still quite a number of Syrian re refugees coming via Turkey. Uh, and now, I mean, they're caught more or less in camps because this um, agreement entered in, in March 2016 between Turkey and, uh, and the EU is not very efficient. Uh, it seems that we ended up in a situation where, I mean, Turkey is uh, dealing with the issue for sure and doing uh, a lot of good things for, for, for the Syrians. But on the European side, I mean, you see, you see problems, and, and in particular in Greece, uh, you still have a problem uh, there, because the conditions in Greece for the Syrian refugees are not uh, too good. At the same time, I mean, you also have the situation uh, in uh, very much in Italy, in Malta, uh, also, and in other countries in southern uh, Europe. And this is very much a question of something completely different namely the question of uh, transit migration. And this uh, is really, I think, the big issue uh, right now in Brussels. I was in Brussels in, in December uh, doing some interviews in different places uh, in EU offices, and it's obvious that uh, right now in Brussels, uh, we, I mean the Europeans, are planning on how to deal with uh, this issue in the years to come. Because there is no doubt that, that the southern European countries will be exposed more and more to a transit migration via the Mediterranean uh, through the countries in, in northern Africa. Uh, people from all kinds of Sahel states and, and states in Africa, south of, uh, of, of the Sahara. This is, I mean, really a very, very big issue in, in Europe and in Brussels uh, right now. No, it's not dead. No, certainly not. Uh, I think uh, one could even say that in some areas uh, the cooperation has been uh, strengthened. It's an interesting paradox, by the way, that uh, the so-called Brexit uh, situation for the UK uh, has in some ways resulted in, I think, a tighter 
cooperation, or at least, I mean, a feeling that it's necessary for the rest of the EU, so to speak, to work closer together. Uh, and and I think that, that um, I mean, in many ways, uh, Europe is working uh, close together uh, in connection with, I mean, the refugee crisis, in connection with uh, the necessity of working together uh, within financial areas of different kind, kinds, but also, I mean, related to, uh, to a necessity of, of uh, securing a status for Europe uh, in, in, in the future. Uh, I mean, it is a fact that if you look at the population of Europe, it's, it's around half a billion uh, people, but I mean, on a global scale, it's diminishing. I mean, we are becoming uh, a smaller, relatively speaking, entity in, in, in the globe. And I think that European politicians are, are beginning to, to think quite a bit about, uh, about this. And in connection with that, by, by the way, it's an interesting paradox that, uh, I mean, in the coming decades, we will certainly need uh, an import of a labor force. And the question is, where it should uh, come from? Turkey can no longer deliver. They have had a demographic development where, I mean, uh, I mean, young people in Turkey are having one, two, three kids, as in Europe. Uh, so, I mean, a labor force from the Arab world is certainly an option for, for Europe. But there, at the same time, I mean, you have this um, political uh, discussion in Europe, if we really want this. Uh, I think in 20, 25, 30 years, we cannot ask this question anymore. I mean, we need uh, an import of, of a labor force. And in this sense, I mean, uh, uh, there is no uh, other way around uh, <clears throat> for Europe but to work together on securing that Europe will, will, will survive as a, as a strong entity, uh, globally speaking, and, and immigrants will, will be part of that, I'm, I'm, I'm sure.